My name is Dennis Thompson, and I've been invited to uh, participate with Feed the Future Soybean Innovation Lab to head up areas of seed system discussion, and in that role, have an adjunct assistant professor at the Department of Crop Sciences, University of Illinois, Champaign-Urbana. Some of the difficulty, not only in Africa, but in a lot of the developing nations, is initially having well-adapted varieties or cultivars that can be expected and to be known to perform well in the local environment and under the economic conditions where they're being produced. So one of the very key beginning points is looking at the either borrowing, finding, or developing appropriate cultivars and varieties that will be suited for the environmental area. Once those varieties are identified in some fashion, then they must be made accessible to the local farmers. So once uh, we know that the seed is there in some way, then we have to find out what is an appropriate way to make sure that the farmers can access that seed in a timely fashion. If they're struggling with uh, rain periods, it must arrive in time to plant before the raining season. It must be at a, a price that's accept, um, acceptable to them in the economic stream that they're working with. And it must be just the logistical. They must have assurance that they will get that seed when they need it so they don't come up empty and miss a planting window. In the areas of solutions of working with some of the day-to-day the -day realities of seed systems and issues, we think that engagement not only of the development agencies, institutions, and organizations, of course it must include the farmer and farmer need, but the other segment of engagement it probably needs to be the commercial sector, looking at the processors, the traders, the commercial entities that will be helping to establish and make a market, and to have the end use ultimately for the consumer benefit, whether that be a direct consumer or to be used for uh, livestock or poultry feed. But there, there must be that economic return and business incentive to make the system sustainable. So we can't forget those that are in that commercial sector. At this stage, our project director has been exploring and thinking about how we might put together a webinar series on seed systems with some of the issues. So we're still in discussion and discovery as to what that might mean, and the recent uh, tropical soybean for tropical development activities uh, give us, you know, give us some more insight into that. I think perhaps one of the, the takeaways might be that we need to think about engagement not only of the farmer in those um, workshops about systems, but perhaps address some of the areas of the commercial sector as well, whether that be processors, the traders, uh, the business sector that's going to fuel the economy. What do they need to know? Do they understand their role in a system and how important they are to help get that system kicked off and to make it sustainable? So well, I think we're still exploring that, but I would suspect if we do a webinar series, we'll engage much more than just the farmers and the developmental personnel. Key takeaways from the workshop in, in a sense would be reiterating is that engagement of others beyond the local farmer. We, we know for sure we have to deal with the farmer and look at farmer needs and the realities of their communities, but we must find a way to broaden the engagement of that commercial sector of those that will be fueling the development. And perhaps they've been an overlooked. Um, they, they're not the bad guys. They're in commercial business. They're there to make a profit, but that profit is what will help fuel and underpin a sustainable system over time. To have further engagement and talk about seed systems activities, I would simply refer people to the Soybean Innovation Lab website and look under Manage Research Area Number 10, Seed Systems, and it has all of my personal contact information and personal website 